England is the birthplace of evolution's first champion, Charles Darwin. Darwin's theory of evolution proposes that simple life forms or species evolved into more complex species by accidental changes over long periods of time. For example, given five million years, an ape can evolve into a man. Since Darwin's time, his theory has become central to our understanding of how man came into existence. It's almost universally accepted today. But according to science investigator Richard Milton, Darwin's theory of how man evolved from the apes has some critical problems. The building behind me is London's Natural History Museum. It looks rather like a cathedral or a church, and in a way that's what it is. It's a kind of temple to Darwin's theory of evolution. People come to museums like the Natural History Museum to get answers to their question. Have we evolved from apes? Do humans and apes share a common ancestor? And to look at an exhibit like this, you'd think that question had been answered decisively yes. But the answer is far from decisive. In fact, this representation is an interpretation of the fossils, the interpretation of one group of scientists. There are other interpretations, but you won't find them in this museum or any other museum in the world. In the model of the evolutionary tree, man and apes are said to share a common ancestor. However, evidence of that common ancestor is highly contested. That's why it is still called the missing link. When Darwin's theory of evolution was embraced, it was assumed that in the next century enough fossil evidence would be found to prove that man had evolved from the apes. Darwinists have promised us a missing link, and so they've got to deliver. They've got to come up with one. Uh, any missing link will do, it seems. Uh, every so often a skeleton is found in Africa. Its uh, discoverers describe it as being the missing link. The headlines come and go, and then later on, that skeleton, th those bones are reclassified, either as human or as ape. And so far, the missing link is still missing. One of the most classic examples of this is the story of Java Man discovered by Eugene Dubois in 1892. Dubois discovered a very primitive looking ape-like skull cap and he discovered this thigh bone about 40 feet away. He said, well obviously they must belong to the same creature. And that creature walked direct like a, a human being and had an ape-like skull, so that must be a missing link. The Pithecanthropus ape man. So maybe you had a big ape and a, a human being living together in Java about a million years ago. The important point to make about the Java man discovery is that it's based on a speculative leap in which two pieces of evidence are put together in a way that's not really warranted. In their controversial book, Forbidden Archaeology, Michael Cremo and Dr. Richard Thompson have documented hundreds of these anomalous artifacts which have yet to be explained. The basic body of evidence that we've uncovered in this book suggests that uh, human beings of modern anatomical type have been existing for many, many millions of years into the past. Archaeologists determine the age of artifacts by the level of strata or layer of earth they're found in. Recent artifacts associated with modern man are generally found close to the surface, while older, more primitive artifacts are in deeper layers of the ground. But sometimes artifacts are found that break all the rules. Archaeologists call them anomalous artifacts. What happens when we find a modern human skull in rock strata far beneath even the oldest of man's ancestors? This bizarre evidence seems to have been well documented, yet the general public and many within the scientific community are unaware of these controversial finds. The question is, why haven't we heard of these discoveries before? Oh, I think we're talking about a massive cover-up. Uh, as I said, over the past 150 years, uh, these archaeologists and anthropologists have covered up as much evidence as they've dug up, literally. According to geologist Virginia Steen McIntyre, she was silenced at the height of her career because of her determination to report the facts. In the summer of 1966, a collection of stone tools, including this leaf-shaped spear point, was uncovered at Hoyatlico, Mexico. To find out exactly how old the spear points were, a team of experts from the United States Geological Survey was called in to date them. 
When we first began to work on the Wayat Lago site, we thought we had an old site. This was back in 66, and we thought it was perhaps 20,000 years old, and at that time that was considered a very old age for the site. We did what they call radiometric dates, which gave us an actual date range, and we used two different methods to do that. One was using uranium uh, atoms, another one was using little zircon crystals. When we finally got the dates and all the different methods we used to date it, it came out to be 250,000 years old. To tell you the truth, I would have been happy with a 20,000-year-old date. It would have made my career. It was very old for the time, but it wasn't so old that it was that controversial. People can take 20,000-year steps. They can't take steps that are over 200,000 years at one time. And I was rather naive. I thought, okay, we've got something big here, but I'm just going to stick with the date. We've got the information. We've got the facts. Let's get the facts out and go on from there. And I didn't realize it was going to ruin my whole career. According to Dr. McIntyre, because she stuck to the facts, all of her professional opportunities were closed off. She's not worked in her chosen field since. The site was closed and permission for further investigation was denied forever. It's something that happens automatically within the scientific community. So when a given piece of evidence disagrees with the predominant theory, then automatically people won't talk about it, they won't report it, and that means that science fails to progress in the way that one would hope. Basically what you find is uh, something we call a knowledge filter. This is a fundamental feature of science. It's also a fundamental feature of human nature. People tend to filter out things that don't fit, that don't make sense in terms of their paradigm or their way of thinking. So in science you find that evidence that doesn't fit the accepted paradigm tends to be eliminated. It's not taught, it's not discussed, and people who are educated in, in scientific teachings generally don't even learn about it. We've seen a broad range of evidence, some of it highly speculative, but there are enough well-documented cases to call for a closer look at the conventional explanation of man's origins, the theory of evolution. The dust was raised, which blocked the sun for years. This marked the end of the dinosaurs. According to conventional scientific theory, no human beings were alive then to witness these events. Or were they? Conventional theory states that modern man originated in southern Africa around 100,000 years ago. From there, he migrated north into Europe and southern Asia continued through Asia and crossed the Bering Strait into the New World around 30,000 years ago. He then came down through North America and finally arrived in South America around 15,000 years ago. Yet numerous artifacts have been found across North and South America that are so old they threaten to completely overturn this theory. In 1880, California state geologist J.D. Whitney was intrigued by an unexpected discovery made 300 feet under Table Mountain. While digging for gold, miners unearthed a variety of stone tools such as mortar and pestles and ladles. Incredibly, the rock strata the tools were reportedly found in was dated as early as 55 million years old. Whitney made a thorough report in these finds and came to an unsettling conclusion. Man could be millions of years older than the current evolutionary model suggests. Over a hundred million years ago, the limestone bedrock of the Paluxy River in Texas was a muddy plain. It was here that countless dinosaurs left their footprints to be fossilized and preserved forever. But the tracks of another creature have also been preserved in these banks, possibly the tracks of man. Archaeologist Carl Bau has led the investigation of these controversial prints for over 12 years. My reaction was one of shock. I had heard of human footprints being found in this locale uh, on the Paluxy near Glen Rose, Texas, but I was rather skeptical. And uh, here, after removing actual rock layers, the team and I excavated a series of dinosaur footprints and 18 and one half inches from one of those dinosaur footprints, we excavated a 16 inch human footprint. 
We excavated 12 footprints in a series. And when you find a trail with left, right, left, right pace and stride, the right distance apart, then you have to interpret this as belonging to a uh, human. It's been claimed that the Paluxy River footprints are a hoax carved into the limestone bedrock as a tourist attraction. Well, we found trails leading under limestone ledges and actually removed the limestone ledges one slab of rock at a time. And we found that both the dinosaur footprints and the trail of human footprints continued under the rock ledges. This evidence is real. This is said to be the fossilized finger of a human being. It too was reportedly found in the same strata as the dinosaur tracks, dating to over a hundred million years old. It had what appeared to be a nail, what appeared to be a cuticle, a taper, a humanoid shape. After I saw the CAT scan, there was no longer any room in my mind for doubt. This scan shows the shape of the finger. It shows tissue beneath the skin of the finger. It shows the bone. It shows the joints. It shows a ligament. That tells me this is a human finger. The limestone layer that preserved these artifacts is reportedly dated at around 135 million years old. Yet, as we saw earlier, objects have been found in rock strata much older than this. In Clerkstorp, South Africa, hundreds of metallic spheres were found by miners in Precambrian strata, said to be a fantastic 2.8 billion years old. The controversy centers around the fine grooves encircling some of the spheres. Lab technicians were at a loss to explain how they could have been formed by any known natural process. According to the curator of the Klerksdorp Museum, Rolf Mars, these spheres are a complete mystery. They look man-made, yet at the time in Earth's history when they came to rest in his rock, no intelligent life existed. They're like nothing I've ever seen before. We've seen a broad range of evidence, some of it highly speculative. But there are enough well-documented cases to call for a closer look at the conventional explanation of man's origins, the theory of evolution.